some of the things that we try to do architecturally is to support the newer kind of controllers, especially these uh, new generation of NVMe controllers with you know, hundreds of cores simultaneously accessing uh, accessing storage layer, right? And to support different storage uh, storage mechanisms underneath it. So we have a pluggable architecture. Uh, so as Sandeep was saying, we have a transport more transport layer which presently is event based. And we are on our way to supporting DPDK-based direct pack packet capture-like transport layers as well for performance reasons. Meanwhile, uh, and then we have the standard implementation. So the, the module that you see as SMB core is the one which implements all of the SMB protocol aspects. Now, beneath that, the SMB core communicates uh, to the iOS layer, and the iOS layer can support different types of storage drivers. So one of the things about the Mosambi stack is that you can actually have different types of uh, storage layers, right? Uh, one can be a VFS driver supporting a VFS file system, another can be a object, so we have an iOS driver for an object store, or, and, we can, and we have other iOS drivers under development. Uh, and you can support a heterogeneous uh, kind of storage under the same SMB server. Now, our present customers are using it as, uh, without the heterogeneity, they are using a homogeneous storage connected to their storage stacks. And their interest in is that uh, this is a lightweight proprietary uh, driver, pro proprietary storage stack library, and they can link it directly into the embedded deeply into their storage stack. And perhaps this the, is a reason other, as well that yeah. a company might choose to Sorry. use Mosambi instead of um, Samba because of the modular nature and the different ways that they could plug into it with yeah. their uh, uh, their other technologies in their storage array. Yeah. That's right. So uh, the other, other part about the SMB environment is that in terms of authentication, etc., we support all the standard uh, Microsoft authentication, including the upcoming Microsoft authentication. So as I was talking to the Microsoft team two weeks ago, and uh, they want us to be able to support PKI as well because uh, for the Azure uh, on-prem or the Azure stack deployments. Where, so we are working with Microsoft in order to get SM, more SMB capable of plugging into the storage spaces architecture, storage spaces direct architecture, so that Azure on stack, uh, Azure stack can be run on top of uh, this. So, uh, the, so all the additional components that are needed, uh, SMB based, uh, replication, RSVD, et cetera, et cetera, are components which are there in our roadmap and we will be releasing it by and by, right? Uh, the other major component that, uh, major interesting aspect of this architecture is the cluster infrastructure service, which allows Mosambi to be a series of, uh, series of very lightweight processing threads, processing objects, which uh, connect via a cluster, uh, a clustering framework. And the clustering framework uh, is based on our own implementation of the Raft protocol. And we also have the ability to create cluster drivers to plug into the customer's clustering structures because most of our customers have their own clustering solutions, uh, software-defined storage with clusters. The other, uh, stand, other, other pieces that we have in there is that we have our own implementation of the RPC server, which runs outside of Mosambi to support WITNESS, RVSS, ODX, and all the associated RPC services that are part of the Microsoft framework. Uh, that's about it. The logging, config, and the standard things. So we have a REST-based uh, management API for configuring it. You don't have to edit configuration files by hand because, again, we are designed for a scale-out distributed system. And we also support, uh, we provide SMI as providers. We have uh, Docker, pl Docker volume plugins, OpenStack, OpenStack Manila drivers, et cetera, et cetera, which we consider peripheral to it. Okay, it, it's not actually part of SMB, but frequently the problem with SMB on non-Windows systems is the mismatch between NTFS and POSIX ACLs. Do you guys do anything That's to address that? Right, so that is, uh, that is an important part of the design. So we have an uh, ACL library, right? And we actually uh, have the facility to, for you to define your own G UID, GID to SID mappings and hold the ACLs. And we hold uh, NT ACLs against uh, NTFS kind of ACLs, the rich ACLs kind of things against the SID. 
and we apply them. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the first part of it. So there are uh, now the question is that is the uh, the, the full POSIX compliance, which obviously uh, Jeremy and Samba guys talk about a lot. We, our present set of customers have not are not really using it in the sense that they're not using it with Linux clients. They're primarily using it with uh, Windows clients and Mac OS clients because when we started building it, we built it for the Hyper V environment, right? So uh, we have a test case, a series of test cases in our uh, in our roadmap where we will be making it uh, fully compliant with the POSIX, additional POSIX things like uh, the file naming conventions and file name remapping. And yeah, like I'm, less, I'm less concerned with being POSIX compliant than with things like NTFS denies working properly. If people are accessing SMB, they want it right. to work like Windows. They don't want it to work like Linux. Absolutely. So we, we, we work like Windows. We have the full Unicode support. All that has been tested and verified. Good. It is the making it work more like Linux part that is, uh, you know, not completely tested as yet. Yeah. Thank so, you. So do you see a, a big use case for this with service providers being able to leverage things like OpenStack to deliver Hyper-V data store services if you're deliver, instead of just delivering other hypervisors? Right, so the, the primary use case of it that the customers, are, like as Sandeep was mentioning, we have two customer deployments. And the two major use cases is one is Hyper-V uh, based ones and it can be in OpenStack and uh, otherwise as well. We see a, lo a lot of uses by, by our customers for uh, a simple Hyper-V manager based Hyper-V uh, deployments uh, in their enterprises, right? Uh, but I have, have I seen an OpenStack based deployment as yet? No, nobody has talked to me about it as yet. The other use case that we see is just as high performance file shares. So we have qualified SQL server running against it and, uh, and we are actually working with Microsoft to try. So Microsoft released uh, SQL server on Linux recently, if most of you are aware of that, I presume. So we're just trying to work with Microsoft to go into an eval with a complete Linux package. So right now, their SMB storage is running on Windows, right? So they're going to be trying. They're going to be uh, putting Mosambi on a Linux machine and running SQL Server as a complete uh, Linux package. And on that note, too, I just to make sure that everybody's aware. Um, Microsoft has really done a remarkable job of uh, opening up with uh, third parties. I know. Uh, some people are still uh, kind of reeling from the SIFS history of the 90s when Microsoft was not so friendly about sharing right. this technology. Nothing could be further from the truth now. I think that these guys will back me up on this. Um, it's really remarkable how willing and happy Microsoft is to work with uh, companies like this. Yes, and I, I must tell you that one of the reasons why we have been successful in getting this product out is because of the collaboration and cooperation of Microsoft team. Primarily, I, mean, I can name the exact individuals, but they have been enormously helpful in ironing out a lot of the details involved in implementing the SMB protocol. And they continue to help us. Uh, I, I just had a meeting with Ned Pyle two weeks ago, and he spent a lot of time ironing out what it means to be part of the storage spaces direct. And uh, yeah. All right, um, we only have a few more minutes here, uh, so go ahead and... Uh... Right, so this is all that I want to speak about as far as architecture is concerned. If anybody has any specific questions, I can talk about it, how, but... Uh, how does, how does your... I can just show, you, show does... you the next slide, which talks about the Mosambi use cases. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. How does this implementation compare to some of the other third-party SMB3 stacks out there? I'm thinking like what NetApp's doing around their SMB3 stack. How does that compare feature-wise? Uh, from what some of the other third-party SMB3 stacks are doing? So uh, it would be unfair of me to comment on the details of the NetApp stack because I happen to have some internal information about it, but I can tell you that we are more feature-rich uh, than the NetApp stack at present, the SMB3 part of it. So NetApp has multiple stacks, let me be very clear about it. If you were asking the question about SMB1, I would say that of all the companies in the world, including Microsoft, probably NetApp's implementation of SMB1 is the most compliant with the standards as specified in the Microsoft documents. Yeah, that's because Microsoft couldn't read their yeah, own sorry. code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, the other one is I Isilon, which actually took the likewise uh, stack and made a very competitive and viable SMB stack out of it. I'm also familiar with some of the implementations by uh, storage vendors like Tintree, right? Uh, and Nutanix, but they are oriented towards specific workloads and in terms of features as well as adaptability, et cetera, they are relatively poor. This one is extensible to a much higher degree and more lightweight. Right, so the use cases are fairly simple. The uh, primary use case that we began with was Hyper-V over SMB and uh, uh, VDI as well as uh, continuously available file servers and things like that and SQL Server. And presently the, uh, presently, the deployments that we are seeing are Hyper-V, a continuously available SMB file cluster for large files, large file-based operations like media editing and things like that, uh, uh, SQL Server, SharePoint kind of deployments, and an uh, unusual use case which we did not anticipate but which uh, came out of the market was this NAS gateway to high-performance storage systems. Uh, you know, Hadoop-like systems, uh, even high-performance uh, HPC kind of file systems like Luster and things like that. So we have customers who are who are evaluating using Mosambi as the SMB part of the gateway. And we also have one more product which we have not mentioned in this a product uh, or a, a, a way of making Mosambi work with an NFS stack. We primarily use NFS Ganesha for this. Right, so that you can have what I call a dual-headed NAS. So you br you bring me storage and you bring me your own clustering components. I will give you a clustered dual-headed NAS solution which supports both NFS and SMB out of a single storage stack, single software library stack. I have a use Matt? case. Yeah, I have a customer with a use case uh, looking for just this type of solution. Uh, their issue is that they have. Um, two uh, completely segregated domains, and they're hoping to right. share that same storage bay uh, between the two. Uh, will this offer that functionality? Right, so yes, the answer is yes. Uh, there, are, there are some caveats to it. Uh, for example, you, I presume you're talking about Windows domains and our authentication system, especially right. if there are trust relationships between the two domains, then it works uh, completely seamlessly, right? However, if the domains do not have proper trust relationships uh, set up, et cetera, et cetera, the simplest answer is that yes, presently we will not, we will allow only authentication against one domain, the domain in which the server is part of it. Uh, but we are working on this problem because we have a customer who has precisely this problem, that is two domains which have no trust relationship with each other. Uh, and we are trying to figure it out with the help of Microsoft what is to be done. We have a few other problems as well, which is like customers who have clients who connect to a particular share. And uh, so we support DFS and we are using DFS shares to implement affinity. So when they are in a particular domain and they connect to the SMB share, the DFS name, we actually compute which is the most optimal server. Oh yes, and I also forgot to mention a very important part of the Mosambi architecture is that internally we collect a lot of statistics and we are in principle rather than overuse the much hyped word of machine learning and artificial intelligence, but we do use a lot of IO pattern analysis, et cetera, et cetera, to figure out what are the best ways to do storage IO, caching, and other things.